Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Stefan Groß. I am a former team member of some German Formula student team. I have round about five years of experience in NX and SimCenter Star CCM, which is the Siemens CFD tool that we're going to display. But first of all, thank you so far, Sam, for the brilliant presentation of NX features. Today, I'm going to show you how to proceed with that parametric model into airflow analysis, which is computational fluid mechanics at that point. And I'm going to show you how to get this wonderful model into SimCenter Star CCM. First, we're starting with the same model that Sam has just developed. And we are going to reduce it. Because we will only take a look at the front wing and how to simulate that changes directly in Star CCM. And we are not going to take everything else with us because the fewer things we take with us the faster the process gets. So we start with that model and just take away everything that we don't need for our front wing. We will need that body, we don't need that rear wing, driver seat, the old body and the driver will be gone. I have prepared another model with basically the very same parameters but everything deleted that we don't need. As soon as you install SimCenter Star CCM Plus you are asked if you want to install the extensions for your CAD tool and thus a new card comes into your program. So NX knows, yes, there is some star CCM on this computer, so we can go for that and just check that we have the right settings. Geometry settings can be done in a pop-up like this and you can, sh you can select what you want to transfer to the CA. FD tool. In this case we want to transfer all cut edges and basically the standard options. The next thing that we are opting for is the design data. We have parametric positioning of the flaps for example and we want to transfer this into the CFD. So we take those parameters from the full list. You can see everything that you defined in your CAD can be found in this very menu. So you can choose what do you want to transfer to CFD to be some design parameters. Here we just choose the front wing outer flap angle of attack and the other parameters that we defined uh, and highlight it in this overview. Just click on OK and save your file. After that it is time for Star CCM Plus. Open it up, open up your old simulation that we want to change and finally get into parametric CFD at that point. Let us just check what is in the geometry. Uh -huh. We do have that race car here. Looks nice. I am quite sure that we have a solution in this file. So we just go for plots and see what's there. Well, the team was that prepared this, this file was quite busy doing some, some plots. So we have still that residual file here. Aha, looks nice. Residuals fell some, some orders and we have some additional parameters here which should not bother us right now. We have some lift coefficients and some drag coefficients, which we really want to just take a look at this. Ah, nice. The, as you can see here, the team always takes the lift coefficient times the projected surface in square meters. So they have a 
basically normalized uh, by velocity and density key performance indicator for their downforce. We can see that we have a thousand iterations already done in that model and we will do some further more after we have changed the geometry. For the drag it's basically the same. We have numbers for every part of the assembly and for the total and it's yeah something like 1.6 square meters CD times A. Cool. And we have that mesh scene here which might just show us the general overview of the scene. Uh -huh. Front inlet, symmetry model, floor and outlet at the back. And somewhere here, yes, we can see mesh geometry. Front wing, wheels, body, driver representation, under tray diffuser, rear wing, all covered by a wonderful mesh. But performing CFD is not only numbers. It is not only looking at the value, okay, how much downforce did I produce with my model. It is also interpreting where did that downforce come from. For that, the team has prepared some scene which is called X-Cut because it's a scene where the whole region is cut in sections normal to the x direction and here you can see that they have opted for the symmetric model to be separately displayed on the left side we have pressure coefficient whereas zero is the normal pressure outside you can see and the blue indicates under pressure thus downforce when it's below the wing and the red one indicates overpressure which could be drag but also downforce if it's on top of the wings. Here we can see a cut through the front wing uh, somewhere where the main wing is present and that small flap above. The right side might even be a bit more interesting as it shows the total pressure coefficient. For interpretation of the flow, this is one of the most important quantities. You need to normalize it by your average, by your uh, far field velocity of the flow, but then it displays as multiplicators of one how does the flow behave. It is based on Bernoulli equation, and one indicates, well, there is no energy loss or gain. Energy gain is, is hard. We have some areas where it's a bit darker, which indicates, okay, there is a certain energy gain, which must also correspond to some energy losses somewhere else. And those energy losses are quite interesting, as they show where the flow is detaching from our surfaces and the boundary layer itself, of course, where we have friction, basically. Of course, we can change where this cut is made. There are some derived parts in that simulation, which are just there, plain sections for this very displayer. We could change this and go a bit more back. And here we are directly behind. In the latest sections of the front wing, we can already see that there is a huge separation area somewhere. Something is going on here. Oh, see that in the middle, we have basically zero pressure. The flap that we can see here still has a lot of overpressure on top and a lot of under pressure underneath. Quite good for downforce. I don't know what's going on here because we have overpressure already there. The tunnel outside seems to be working in some kind of way. The tumble can also be seen here as we are displaying a streamline line integral convolution which shows where in which direction the flow is going. But keep in mind we are just in a plane so it does not show normal to the plane just movement in the plane. 
Well, this. let's uh, see how the flow is going. It's washing outwards here and there. And yes, this is how we can interpret the flow around the front wing. Another view to interpret the data is always uh, the surface pressure as it is shown here. Don't let this representation fool you. It's just a half model which is mirrored. This is better for simulation because you can basically simulate just half the number of cells and get the same results. For straight line, this does not really matter. You can, you can see here, um, the red areas are over pressure, the dark blue areas are extreme under pressure. Something is going on at the rear edge of the front wing and we do have those white and black lines on the body. And those lines are, where the f are streamlines where the flow attaches in white or where the flow separates from the surface in black. You can see here on that bull wing, we have flow separation just around here. So we might opt for yeah, just cropping it here. We have flow separation in the middle of the front wing. Maybe we want to crop here or do something else with the surface just to yes, make the flow more efficient. Separation just around here might not be that good and well the diffuser shouldn't it be full blue something is going on at these areas here and it does not seem to be working as it should we have some separation here which need further investigation but overall just because the flow is separating does not necessarily mean that this has no effect anymore because we still have downfalls over here and the overall angle of attack might still be suitable. Okay, let's see how we get that new geometry right in here. Geometry time. Let us head back into the geometry part of the model. We are here and just take a look what is in the parts. We have, well, basically some parts it is sorted, which I quite like, um, into air, car input, put geometry, the aero package itself, which is wings and under tray. Then we do have some subtracts, uh, some surface operations for preparation before we can actually run the CFD simulation. The rules are displayed in here might be some some useful application of CAD and some refinements where we later refine the mesh. Okay, let's import our new geometry. For that, we just go for File, Import, and click on Import Surface Mesh. Please note that there are several options, several ways how to get CAD data into the CFD. I'm only showing one here, which makes use of the design parameters that we set in the CAD. But there are other options. You can import into the 3D CAD modeler in Star CCM. The very, very low-tech variant might be just importing FTL data, which is basically dead triangles, which cannot really be altered. There is some way to import STEP files or XT files, which is parasolid, which is a bit improved. But why shouldn't we deal with native parts if we can? When we import the CAD data into CFD, there are some important things that we should remember. Please don't forget to always cancel out the import option open geometry scene after import. Or otherwise sooner or later you will have a bunch of empty geometry scenes somewhere lying around. We don't necessarily 
need contacts between the parts, this might even slow things down because every time we change the geometry, the software wants to redefine those contacts. So we cancel that out, but we use the use sim center star CCM plus client for an X. This establishes the connection between the part file and the simulation itself and makes us use all the parameters. So now we click on OK and just let the software do its job. After this successful import, you can see that there is a new composite right here in our parts and another menu point under under geometry has popped up, which is FSAE. This is basically the name of the part file that we import, and this is what's the assembly. And after uh, below that, you can see that there are CAD parameters, like the end plate height, the front wing height, angle of attack several times, leading edge distance, and things like that because all those parts are more or less part of the arrow package I just drag and drop them in there and we have them here this does not matter for the CAD data so to get this into our model well it's basically quite easy we have that front wing which was number 280 version of the formula student model and we can still find this in here. What we're now going to do is just replace them step by step once. And then we have that change from static geometry to parametric. Only single time we replace the part in the process and then forever you just change parameters to have a new geometry and this is a massive speed up for your manual workflow. Maybe you're wondering why we cannot yet see the front wing in our display on the right side. Well this is because it's not yet there. To include this I just click on the front wing in my in my parts section and drag and drop it over to the scene. I click for on a new display and say okay I want a new display, a new surface, click on that. Well, it's pink now. Okay, we change it to geometry the display and now we can see okay the gray part is our new one. It's a bit higher as it was before. This is a parameter that we have entered. Well, that's basically what it is. If we want the same representation as on the old front wing, we should go for color mode, not default, but distinguish inputs. Then every separate face has a different color. Okay, so let's just replace now our part in our process. So. First, here's this offset, okay, front wing is not in there, but just go for the... Then we have a wing offset, yes, I guess it should be in there as well. Double click always ensures that all the surfaces are checked. Um, the CAD MRF, moving reference frame front left is not really in the model so it doesn't matter that there is an exclamation mark here. Subtract wings. We have several subtracts here and uh, they are divided in one is for the for the CAD based data and the other thing is for the data which is not CAD based dead files in car input geometry like the body Okay, then we have that surface mesh. We should check that we have 
the wings in the wing section in the wing refinement oh I guess we need to do this once more subtract wings ah, we just take all arrow parts and it's cool volume mesh I guess we need another refinement here as well wings yes car input geometries subtract wings are oh, just all the arrow package okay this is a one-time change you don't need to do this ever again I have now executed the subtract wings and the subtract for the body after we have successfully replaced the geometry in our meshes and in our subtracts beforehand there's only one thing we need to check once now and forever is the new rear wing already in our boundary condition well it is not there's nothing in here so we will just put it once in our boundary condition arrow package uh, this is our full front wing we say okay that should be it from time to time while changing geometry there might be an error with opened seams that the part displayed is not the part meshed of course we did not yet remesh it but this will change in the next step as we have now changed every geometry the only thing next for us is to run the surface measure for the volume and the volume mesh as well just right click on the one you want to execute the surface mesh will always run first